Hi everybody, welcome back to the series in which I continue to try and mod my Skyrim that I have close to 4,000 hours with and 7 million crashes later still experience bugs I've yet to see. But you know what won't crash a million times? Black Desert Online, an open world action MMORPG. And did you know they recently just released a new class called The Guardian? Look at this shit. Look at it! It's glorious! I've seen enough Nordic sleuths in my day to know that this is A1. I mean, sure, you can choose from over a dozen other classes, but what beats this guys have you seen the under boob fellas this is the best it, it's just the best i mean just look at the graphics everything is shiny and aesthetic as shit don't get me started on combat it's responsive it's flashy it's weighty it feels satisfying and, and this is at like level one guys just imagine like level a, a zillion character creation is fantastic every outfit looks as good as the best skyrim armor mods i've seen the world is vast seamless with no loading screens and the game is always being updated with brand new content and best of all you can try it out for free using my seven day free trial using my link down below first up we have a preview mod for beyond skyrim that one mod that's attempting to add pretty much all of tamriel inside of the skyrim engine that i can only see being finished in 2060 but for now we have where's of Tamriel, mod that's gonna park a giant ship called the Dawn's Venture inside of your Dawn Star. That sounds like some kind of porno title, but I assure you it's not. Inside the ship is very well designed. It's cozy, it's exotic, the shelves are filled with items from all across Tamriel to expand your tiny little pea mine that's only been ever exposed to Skyrim. You have egg dishes that look like infected dark elf boobs. New and exciting board games that your uncultured ass will never understand. Right, the swords are f***ing curved just like their pe- The trader's name is Cardano Apollo. Welcome, welcome. Cardano Apollo, traveling purveyor of knickknacks, curios, and whatever takes my fancy at your service. She's charismatic, funny, knowledgeable, intelligent, good looking, everything you never get in a girl because she'd be too good for you. And you can ask her for news from the rest of the world, all the way from elsewhere to Cyrodiil. Word in Inequina says that the Rimini's regulators have been spotted in Khajiiti lands. And even more exotic locations like Akavir. <sighs> I may be a traveling merchant, but do I look like Iris the Explorer from those kids books? Okay, maybe not. And it's so well written that it's really believable. I can actually imagine her being somewhere in elsewhere, getting incredibly high with a bunch of Khajiits and snorting that moon sugar. Then heading to Hammerfell and getting that good dick. And of course, she'll sell you everything you see in her store and more. Moon cakes, exotic alcohol, it's weird kinky torture device. Are you sure that's not from Skyrim? Fish sticks that I'm pretty sure Kanye West would appreciate, allowing you to taste the flavors of every province virtually, of course. Dress in foreign exotic styles. Decorate your home with relics from faraway lands and overall just expand your pea mind to include the rest of the world you uncultured fu- Next up I went on a mission to overhaul my farmhouses because why not? Farmhouses cover virtually all of Skyrim. They're essentially the default building in Skyrim because most people in Skyrim are peasants so why not make them great? I was initially attracted to a mod called Vlanimus Farmhouse Overhaul because I thought it was going to change the meshes similar to that one Dawnstar mod we covered. Unfortunately it didn't seem like the shape of the farmhouse is actually changed and everything got a lot more red looking which is cool but I wanted to try something else so I went and downloaded the most popular farmhouse retexture ours farmhouse and handcarts which made everything darker much better for a dark fantasy playthrough better vines and on top of that changed the stones lining riverwood to log fences which seems really cool but honestly, there was something about those giant round rocks that really did it for me. And I honestly don't know if I can handle losing those rocks. The hand carts, on the other hand, turned into these ultra realistic wagons that you'd find in like the old Oregon Trail that we played as six year olds in elementary school. Which honestly brought back some pretty bad memories because that was a pretty fucking depressing game. And made my otherwise extremely happy and positive Riverwood into what seemed like a blood fest again. Which is extremely unfortunate because the textures look very realistic and probably exactly the style that I'm looking for. Unfortunately, the memories of my people dying on the Oregon Trail will never leave me. And so ultimately I said fuck it to ours, farmhouse and handcarts, fuck it to Valanimus, fuck it to the vanilla textures. I'm just gonna go with the noble 2k textures, which is pretty much what I started with, so this whole venture was pretty much completely a waste of time. Fellas, up next we have what I can only describe as the mod of the decade. Sky UI, who needs that anyways? 
Skywind, I'll be dead before that thing's even out. Instead, what I have for you is the courier is now Giant's Frostbite Spider. I'm sorry. So to begin testing this mod, I did what was only reasonable. I genocided the entirety of Whiterun. Don't worry, the children are still alive. Somehow the killable children mod didn't work. Now all I had to do was wait for the courier to come deliver me my inheritance letters. And- God, this is the greatest mod ever. So as you can see, the spider is now moving at 500% speed for maximum obnoxiousness. However, it is still a spider, which means you can't avoid it by going into the water. Unfortunately, though, it is still the courier as well, which means it's essential and nothing you do will ever kill it. Oh, thank God that's over. Jesus Christ. Oh! Ah! I've been looking for you. Now, for some reason, he decided to park his ass in my riverwood. I waited all day and night until my god eventually abandoned me. And then I asked myself, why? Why did God abandon me? And then I looked at my YouTube channel, I completely understood why. By the way, the outfit we have donned on this episode is the DX Druid Armor. DX as in Deserter X, who has not yet deserted us after all of these years, unlike my God and Todd Howard and the Fallout franchise. Anyways, just what a great piece of attire. My favorite part is the ass astronomically detailed stitching in almost every part of the outfit that looks incredibly handmade organic, which is very fitting for the druid theme. It feels like it was built from materials found in nature. The undies even give you 100 carry weight and 25% stronger potions, which is absolutely phenomenal. Oh shit, you can see her vagina. It was even inspired by the Guild Wars 1 Prophecies Elite Druid Armor, which is a game that is dear and near to my heart. Unlike Oregon Trail, which left me a permanent mark of terror in my heart, so recently I've been yearning the companionship of a feline only to remember that I'm allergic to cats and then to fall into a deep pit of depression. And when I want something I don't have in real life, I typically just mod it into Skyrim. I think it really says absolutely nothing about my load order genie. So I decided to just pet every animal in Skyrim instead using animated petting. And so back in Riverwood, I- ah! Trying my best to avoid the naked man chasing me down from my library books, I found one of Mihal's house cats, which pretty much looked exactly like the kind of cat I wanted in real life, but I couldn't do to my disability. I tried to pet him, but instead seemed to make a gesture suggesting that the naked man come forth and penetrate my butthole, which is not exactly what I wanted, which led me down a rabbit hole of deep, crippling depression, in which I can only recover weeks later, where I'm filming this video now. Good I shot him in the face, got kicked out of the college, and decided to chase down a new rabbit companion. He was inside of Honey Strand Cave, where also a dead dragon laid for absolutely no reason. As far as I know, dragons don't spawn in caves, but since when has logic ever mattered in Skyrim? The rabbit was getting viciously mauled by a cave bear. I questioned its legitimacy as a rabbit. My suspicions were correct. It had blood on its face, probably came from the movie Monty Python, and essentially did not allow me to interact with any of the dialogue choices whatsoever which is a bug I haven't seen my close to 4,000 hours of playing Skyrim. In a chest nearby was a holy hand grenade. Perhaps the modder wasn't capable enough to actually put the hand grenade where it should belong when you shoot an arrow, so he put it in the next best place, directly by your feet. I shot it at the citizens of Riften because honestly at this point, consequences in Skyrim are nothing but a memory. My companion decides to speed hack across the map, and all of a sudden a civil war has ensued. I decide to avoid it because I'm not a huge fan of civil wars, and I head into the inn, where I reunite with Dover Bear, a companion I haven't seen since literally 2012. He agrees to kick some ass with me, and I agree to touch him tenderly. Besides Dover Bear, you can pet your mount, you can pet horses, and oddly enough, you can pet human beings who have a solid relationship with you. Of course. Simply doesn't work on human NPCs. Selecting the dialogue option merely ends the dialogue without effect. Why are you trying to pet human NPCs anyways? Um, head patting is life baka. Click this mod assuming it had it to be honest. So disappointed it doesn't. Creator made Marisai and others. Sad. And finally, we have a companion mod that's more of a quest mod, that's really more of a dungeon mod, that's really just the mod that makes Bethesda's dungeons look bad. It's called Maelstrom, and it begins when you respond to an Adventures Wanted ad. Like many quests in Skyrim, you're hired to do a job in a cave where many others have tried and died. And of course, a voice talks to you all the way through. Who... who are you? 
but this time there's something a lot more sinister going on. It's kind of like the beginning of the Dark Knight, when Joker basically has his henchmen slowly kill each other off as they get closer to the money, but instead of the money it's actually a hot voice acted dragon babe, that I don't want to know what you plan on doing to her with the various mods you install off of Lover's Lab, and I apologize to the voice actor in advance, my girlfriend actually does the same thing with a similar follower mod and I don't want her to know what people do with that. I'm sorry if I'm freaking out here, did you know the voice actor actually gave us free tickets to the Santa Monica Pier Park where I met my girlfriend Ginny for the first time? Anyways, the mod has you doing a variety of activities and challenges that make vanilla dungeon seem as complicated as the first Super Mario. And forget mods that added the rest of the totem animals to the spinning totems, he's created his own pillars with Norse symbols on them, with far more creative ways of discovering the actual solution than just simply finding the solution on the fucking floor like you do in the vanilla game. It was nothing short of pure epicness when I discovered the solution. And when you have the solution, he makes it even tougher by adding and or puzzles you would find in a logic class in algebra or some shit. Everything you touch seems to have some use for something. She's longing for the heart. She's lost so long ago. You'd be like, hmm, what can I do with this? You'll think harder than you ever have, but none of the puzzles I can ever say are unfair. The sheer size of the dungeon is something to behold, with various different challenges in each part of the dungeon that can be completed in any way you wish. It's completely non-linear, you learn a shit ton about Norse mythology, you'll probably sweat a few times. The light. I want to see the light again. <laughs> but most of all, you'll probably walk away with an understanding of how much more Bethesda possibly could have done with dungeons, but decided to go with whatever the shit is in the vanilla game. It's incredibly well crafted from beginning to end, possibly the greatest dungeon I think that's ever been made for Skyrim so far. I really hope you guys check it out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace! Looking for some cheap games? Check out g2a.com and use the code MXR to get 3% cash back. Link down below.